Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the price of Bitcoin, the Bitcoin dominance, as well as a theoretical altcoin season. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we're essentially just gonna look at a range of possibilities so that you can consider the implications and the risks involved in the cryptocurrency asset class and then make a hopefully a more, a more informed decision. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just simply looking at the dominance of Bitcoin. We've been talking about this one for a while. You can see that we had a local top in September of 2019 at this level. We also had another local top in January of 2021 at approximately the same level. Now, the interesting thing is when you zoom out, the Bitcoin dominance has trended down over time. And you can think of this here as an altcoin bubble, okay, altcoin bubble right here. And it, and it came ultimately, it, it regressed back to the mean. So this is more or less the mean. It has been trending down. Uh, despite what Bix, uh, Bitcoin maximalists might say, the dominance has trended down over time. Now the question is we're sort of at a crossroads. We're coming to a crossroads and the question will be, well, is Bitcoin going to break up and continue gaining dominance back? And ultimately we'll look at all of this just like, uh, um, you know, and, and, and look at it in, in, uh, you know, fondness or whatever, and be like, oh, you guys remember that time altcoins took some of that dominance away from Bitcoin, but then Bitcoin ultimately just took it all right back and eventually ended up going back to, you know, 90% or something. Is that how history will remember things? Or are we re just simply regressing to the mean of heading down? And this was just a, a, a preemptive altcoin bubble. It collapsed. We're looking at it inverted, of course. It collapsed back down. And now we're, we're trying to see which way are we going? Is the dominance of Bitcoin going to continue to increase or are we gearing up for an altcoin season which would cause the Bitcoin dominance to potentially decrease? So we're gonna break down these different possibilities. So the first thing we need to do is we're gonna look at a one hour chart, okay? Now, when we look at a one hour chart, first of all, we must recognize that short term moves, as I've said before, are very hard to predict and they're more, they're more so geometric Brownian motion or a random walk. So trying to predict short-term moves is very hard, but I just wanna give you guys an idea of the implications on if various things were to happen. So one thing we note is that, well, since January 3rd, the dominance has been trending down. Okay, we can, we can clearly see that it has been trending down. Another thing we can note is that, well, it seems like we bottomed around this level about three times now. This level being this level being approximately just over 68%, around 68.2%. Currently, we're at 68.6. Now, if we were to follow this, it looks like they would ultimately converge on January 15th. Okay, ultimately, it looks like they're going to converge around January 15th or so, which is approximately three days from now. Now, the issue with these things are that you can always just slightly redraw the lines uh, to to paint a different narrative, right? You could draw it like this. You could maybe try to say, okay, well, we're coming out a little bit more and it'll be maybe January 17th or something. Um, the issue is that, you know, it, it's always, it, it's very much down to how well or exactly how someone draws the lines on a, on a short-term chart. So if we just take a pragmatic look at this chart, we could say, okay, well, it seems like it, it's, you know, maybe it's going to come back down here and then ultimately the dominance will decrease. And what would that imply if the dominance is decreasing? Well, one thing it could imply is that if Bitcoin is having this local top for a while and it's not going to go above 42K in the foreseeable future, and if it calms down and volatility on Bitcoin reduces here, then it could leave it could lead to a theoretical altcoin season where people just start throwing money at altcoins because they were mostly invested in bitcoin those investments have gone up 4x and they just start throwing money at altcoins in the hopes of, of of making it big so one possible scenario would be that bitcoin stabilizes for a few days 
here, and then altcoins start to fly. And you might say, well, Ben, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because you know Bitcoin is probably either going to go down and 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 we'll look back at this and say, oh yeah, that was a pretty nice bubble, or it will continue on. The chances that it it necessarily continues on for weeks at this level is probably pretty low. So again, now that's probably exactly what it will do. But let's just say in terms of probability, it seems like, you know, it's either going to go up or down. Um, however, on daily time frames, you know, it can chop sideways for a bit. And one of the things we can do it, to, to better understand this market is simply go back and look at the move in 2017. What happened here? Well, ultimately, the peak was here and we ultimately trended down. However, it did not preclude altcoins from going absolutely crazy in this area. Okay, so despite the fact that Bitcoin pulled back, we know that this was when the altcoin dominance was simply going through the roof. Okay, it was, it was just going crazy during this time. Uh, and, and ultimately, once Bitcoin was not able to hold 13K and it was trending lower, that was when the writing became a little bit more apparent that, okay, this isn't just another correction that we ultimately trend higher, right? Correction, trend higher, correction, trend higher. This was correction and not trend higher, and we're going lower. And that's where the dominance of Bitcoin started to go back up. So if we go back and look on the daily time frame at 2017, 2018, you can see, um, let's go all the way back to 2017, 2018. So here's the beginning of 2018. You can see here that the dominance of Bitcoin was dropping through the end of December. And then in January, it started to go back up. January, February, March, it started to go back up. And it went up pretty uh, a pretty healthy amount, all the way down from 35.44 up to 50.6. So a pretty nice move by the Bitcoin dominance. And then we know that it continued to go up uh, for a long time. And now we're sitting here looking at, okay, well, on the one hour chart, what is it going to do? Because we are at a crossroads now. I, I you know, I feel like the, the dominance, the the first thing, the first the first scenario that we said is, well, it could drop, okay? And, and the way that it would drop, if we, if hopefully we painted the, the picture for it fairly well, the way that it could drop is if we don't need to go this sideways for a few weeks, but if it just chops sideways for a few days here and there, before either continuing up or continuing down, it could lead to a short-term move of altcoins, okay? It could lead to a short-term move of altcoins, and then the dominance for Bitcoin could break down. On the other hand, what if Bitcoin does not chop sideways? Well, if it does not chop sideways for a little while, then, and Bitcoin volatility remains high, whether it's to the upside or the downside, the dominance will likely go up. So if Bitcoin pushes to like 40K, 45K, 50K in the next couple weeks, then maybe what we'll see happen is we'll see this come back up and then we'll say, oh, look at that beautiful W that formed, right? We'll just say, oh, look at this. It was just so obvious that that was going to happen. Okay, so that's one scenario. The other scenario is that Bitcoin dominance goes up, not because the price of Bitcoin goes up, but because in fact, instead of chopping sideways for a little bit and giving altcoins room to breathe, it just simply comes back down. And, and then we say, oh, look at that. It was, another, it was another bubble. And we ultimately regress back towards the mean or something like that. And, and maybe this was, you know, this was our, our despair region. Of course, when you're in a bubble, um, it's hard to know exactly where you are. We, we, we certainly do not claim to know exactly where we are. Uh, we could always look back at this and, and see that what ultimately played out was something like this, and then it came back down, right? That's a possibility as well. I just want to I just want to elucidate all the various possibilities so that you know the risk that you're taking. So keep an eye on the Bitcoin dominance chart. If we see this start to bleed, very you know uh, over the next few days, and it's coming down, that means that altcoins are starting to gain against Bitcoin. And then I feel like we're either going to see a major move to the upside or a major move to the downside. And and it's this it's this uncertainty that yields that risk. This is the risk we take. The risk you take in owning a lot of altcoins right now is that if Bitcoin does not chop sideways for a while, and, and volatility goes up, 
to the upside or down, then the dominance of Bitcoin will go up. And the nice thing about this, a consolation prize for altcoin holders, is that if Bitcoin continues this move, okay, if it continues this move and continues going up, and we, and we look back at this as just yet another correction, then the good news for altcoins is that, well, they'll probably still trend up, but the dominance of Bitcoin will go up and, and you know, Bitcoin maximalism will, will be in full, um, in full, in full, full view of a lot of people, right? People will be saying, okay, well, yeah, all these altcoins are not worth anything. Um, it, it's just Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. And I mean, I'm a big proponent of Bitcoin. The majority of my position, my portfolio is in Bitcoin. It always has been and it always will be. So I'm a big proponent of Bitcoin, but I also am, am uh, seeking higher returns than simply what just Bitcoin can get me. And that's why I, I do also have other coins in my portfolio that also actually incre increase my risk adjusted returns. So the general idea here is that the next few days, I think, will be critical in terms of looking at the Bitcoin dominance. If, if the Bitcoin bubble, and I'm not, and I'm not claiming this is a macro multi, you know, cycle bubble that'll, that will only see 42K for the entire cycle, uh, but it could, be, it could theoretically be a top for, for a while. Um, and if it is, then it will ultimately depend on how long can Bitcoin go sideways before it drops back down. And if it's not, and we just continue this move in a few days, well, then again, Bitcoin dominance will go back up, and we'll look back at this and say, oh, what a what a nice little pattern uh, that it that Bitcoin played out here. Now, one chart I want to show you guys that I, I I typically only show on the premium list, but we have a lot of new people in this space. So I want to give people a, a broader perspective here. This is an interesting chart. Okay, this is an interesting chart. Sorry for blinding your eyes with the white background, but it is what it is. And this shows the Bitcoin dominance as a function of time. And it's color coded by a few different things. It's green if it's above the 20 week and it's red if Bitcoin's below the 20 week moving average. Okay, pretty straightforward. It's dark blue if Bitcoin's above its prior all time high and it's light blue if Bitcoin's below its prior all time high. And this has been our, our downtrend so far. So we're near the top of this channel. So it seems like there's at least a, a, a decent chance that the dominance of Bitcoin will come back down. Okay, there's a decent chance that it will come back down, but this could put you know this could push higher. I mean, and still remain in this imaginary line channel that I drew. It could go up to maybe 74, 75 percent. I think it made it to 73 percent so far. Um, but if you look at this channel, we see that okay, we spent a long time in this. This is essentially our mean reversion to the mean. This is the mean, and then this was our altcoin bubble. And then back to the mean and then we're just chopping in the mean and if we continue this then maybe eventually we'll have another altcoin bubble that'll take us much lower in bitcoin dominance of course that remains to be debated um and there's a lot of people that would debate that to the ends of the earth that will never see uh, a bitcoin dominance this low again i think it's still theoretically possible that that something like that happens uh because we know that the altcoin market uh can can get pretty heated whenever Bitcoin is very bullish and Bitcoin volatility in the short term is low. So we're going to keep an eye on that chart, but we also want to make sure that we're watching this chart, the dominance of Bitcoin. If you see it start to go back up, it means that Bitcoin volatility is going up because when Bitcoin volatility goes up, either to the upside or the downside, it generally means that altcoins are, um, uh, are simply just going to bleed against Bitcoin over the macro scale, or over over uh, in, in a generalized sense, right? I mean, of course, some some coins can do well, some coins won't do as well. But over the over the the entire asset class, the entire asset class will bleed against Bitcoin, of course, if the dominance of Bitcoin goes up. I mean, that's just saying if if the Bitcoin dom if the dominance of Bitcoin goes up, then the altcoin dominance goes down. That's of course very clear. So keep an eye on this chart. I think the next few days will be pretty interesting to see where Bitcoin heads. If it holds these levels, maybe we'll start to see altcoin starts to move again. If that happens, the dominance of Bitcoin will drop back down uh, most likely. And if if this is just one more correction on the way to a macroscopic bubble, the dominance will go likely back up, meaning that your alt Bitcoin ratios will likely go back down. Hopefully we've covered enough of the basis. Again, I don't know. I don't claim to know exactly what will happen. 
I just want to present everyone with, with the different possibilities so that you know the risk you're taking. You know, the worst thing is when you enter into an investment and you simply have no idea of the risk involved. And the risk involved right now is pretty high, right? The risk involved in the market is fairly elevated. It doesn't mean that a return's not there, okay? It does not mean that buying Bitcoin right now won't yield you a nice short-term ROI. It just means that the risk is there. And if if in one of the in, if in one of the universes of the multiverse we ended up coming back down, well then everyone every analyst you know from here to Timbuktu will be saying, oh well yeah it was a bubble. Um, and if we don't if we don't do that, then every analyst will just say, oh yeah that was just who bought the dip who bought the dip. Again, it's all fun and games as long as it keeps going up. And then it just takes one shakeout uh, to really turn people's stomachs. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We also have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Check that out if you want access to exclusive information, uh, weekly reports, weekly videos, the risk dashboard, the Telegram alerts channel, a whole lot more. Check that out if you guys are looking for um, exclusive content. At the very least, subscribe to the channel and turn on your alerts. Let's go for 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys for getting me to 90,000 subscribers. Let's go for 100,000 subscribers, and I'll see you next time. Bye.